Hey there everyone, this is Ryan from Private Ground School, and welcome back. Many of you are probably wondering why I haven't made a new video in several months, and the main reason is I got caught up with projects and flying during my last year of college. I actually just graduated in May, then I took and passed the uh, commercial multi-engine airplane practical exam. I'm about to take the single engine add-on practical within the next couple weeks, and I'm also studying at the same time to become a certified flight instructor. I will keep you all posted on my progress with that, and hopefully I'll be using the knowledge I gained from CFI training to make better lesson plans in the near future to post up on my YouTube page. That being said, uh, let's begin today's lesson. Today we'll be learning about airworthiness. Many of you are able to fly the airplane, especially if you're with an instructor. However, how can you know for sure that you are legal to fly without the aid of asking your flight instructor? After all, there are at least 12 and 12 instruments and pieces of equipment that are required to be on the airplane and operable at all times. Uh, well, lucky for us, aviation uses many acronyms to help us remember things as this. Let's take this one to the whiteboard. Hey again, guys. Alright, so we're going to begin things with the required uh, equipment for day VFR flying. If you don't know, VFR stands for Visual Flight Rules and it's based on weather, visibility, um, clouds, it's other stuff you'll learn about during your training. We'll start with the T of this funny looking word called tomato flames. This is actually the acronym for the equipment you'll need. The T stands for tachometer. The O stands for oil pressure gauge. The M stands for manifold pressure. I apologize for my sloppy handwriting here. Now you guys are probably going to be one taking notes um, for everything I'm writing down here because it'll be stuff you can use during your training and you want to turn your computer on to reference this again. Some of you are wondering here with manifold pressure, you don't have that on your airplane. Um, some of you might have it, but most of you, if you're doing private, I'd assume would not. The reason your plane does not have a manifold pressure gauge is because most of you are pl probably flying airplanes with fixed pitch propellers. Um, the difference in fixed pitch and variable pitch, variable pitch will have the manifold pressure, and variable pitch basically allows you to take the, the basic angle of the blades, let's say looks about like this, and you can turn, you can change the blade angles uh, with a propeller control. It's stuff you'll all learn down the way, but that's the reason why most airplanes will not have this. Now, if you have a fixed pitch propeller, you will not have to have a manifold pressure gauge. Moving on to A is altimeter. T is temperature gauge. Just the same. Most of the airplanes you're training in for private pilot will not have a temperature gauge. The reason being is most of the planes you're using to train in is probably something along the lines of a Cessna 172, 152, maybe a Piper Cherokee, uh, 140, something along those lines. And those engines have air-cooled engines. Temperature gauge is for liquid-cooled engines. Those will be some of the more high-performance engines that can take the extra weight of the liquid to cool the engine. For the air-cooled engines that you're using, you're probably going to have an oil temperature gauge. And this will, uh, this will measure the temperature of the oil inside the engine to measure how, uh, how efficient the cooling is going. Moving on, F is for fuel gauges. L is for landing gear position. So for landing gear position indicator, as you can assume, if your plane has fixed landing gear, as most of yours probably do for private pilot, you don't have to worry about having um, landing gear position indicators. Let's go back up here real quick to these two gauges. If you're flying a single engine airplane, you only need one of each, or one of the one that's respective to your airplane. If you're flying a multi-engine airplane, let's say you have two engines on your airplane, you're going to need two of the one your airplane uses. 
If you have three engines on it, you need three gauges for the, uh, you, you need one for each engine you have, is basically what I'm getting at here. Alright, back to the, the flames part of this acronym. A is for airspeed indicator. I can't really write cocky, or uh, not cocky, uh, sideways here, so I'm going to be tilting this. M is for magnetic compass. E is for ELT, and that stands for Emergency Locator Transmitter. Now this is a little, um, a, it basically gives off a signal in case you have an impact, and the signal can be monitored on a certain radio frequency. Hopefully you will not have to ever use this, but even if you uh, have a really hard landing, it might set the signal off, so every plane is required to have an ELT. S stands for seat belts. Now, if your airplane is manufactured after the 12th of December, 1986, you're going to need to have a shoulder harness along with a seatbelt. Now, you're wondering why, you know, you fly with an airline such as, let's say, American Airlines. You never have a, a shoulder harness. You just have the regular lap belt. Well, that's because it also says in the regulation, if the airplane has nine seats or less, is whenever you need this harness for the shoulder, the shoulder harness. So. That's why those are uh, excluded from this regulation. Now there's two more letters I always add to this acronym that most people don't. It's an A up here. It stands for anti-collision light. And the reason that this is usually not included in the acronym is it only applies for aircraft that were manufactured after March 11th, 1996. The other is an F right here before this F, and it stands for flotation device. Just the same, usually you won't have to worry about this because it's only used on airplanes that are flying over bodies of water and if you're uh, outside of the power of gliding distance to land. Now, you need a flotation device for each person on board. So if it's you flying and two buddies going along, you'll need a total of three flotation devices because there are three people inside the aircraft. You will also need what they call a pyrotechnic device, which is such as like a, like a flare. A signaling device is basically what it is. All right, guys, these are the day VFR equipment. We will move on over to the night VFR, and I'll see you in a second. All right, so now that we know the day VFR, let's move on to night VFR. As it would only make sense. A common thought between people be, um, that don't have any, any training done or very, sm very small amounts of training is that you need an instrument rating to go flying at night. And this is not true. As long as you stay in the, day v in the, in the VFR, as long as you stay visual at night, and you abide by all the visual rules uh, concerning clouds and visibility, you do not need a night or uh, instrument ready to fly at night. Let's go on. The acronym is going to be FLAPS. It's kind of a bad S. Okay, let's start with the F, which is for fuses. Now, if your plane has circuit breakers, that takes the place of spare fuses. It's just if your plane uses fuses, uh, you have to have a spare set of fuses. L is for landing light. Now that's only required if you're flying the plane for compensation or higher. However, it would be an extremely stupid decision to fly without a way to land, without a landing light at night, in my opinion. A is anti-collision light. Day VFR, you need it if the airplane was manufactured after 1996. For night, it's always required. P is position lights. These are also known as navigation lights. They are the red and green wingtip lights. S is going to be a source of energy. Such as an alternator generator. Alright, I'll flip the page in my lesson plan here, we'll move on. 
All right, to conclude, we're going to be going over the required inspections to make you legal to fly. We have an acronym for this as well, which is called AVIATE. We'll start with the A, which stands for Annual Inspection, which has to be done every 12 calendar months. The exception to this is if the aircraft is over 12,500 pounds, is the general exception. Um, we will go, there's a few more exceptions to that, but I'm not going to get into those. You can look it up in the far end if you would like to. The V is for VOR. So if you're using a VOR for instrument flying, which obviously we won't be because we're doing private, you have to have the VOR um, inspected every 30 days, which you really do on your own. It does not need to be done by a mechanic at all. I is going to be the 100 hour. So it's not really an I, it's more of a one. 100 hour inspection, which is done obviously every 100 hours. Now this is only required if the aircraft is being used for compensation or higher, and if it's under 12,500 pounds. A, which is altimeter. It's more of a pedostatic check. This is done every 24 calendar months. or every two years basically. T is transponder. This has to be done every 24 calendar months. And last is the ELT inspection. This has to be done every 12 calendar months. And also, if the ELT is used for more than 50% of its useful battery life, or one hour cumulative time. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching my video. Go ahead and give me any feedback, what you think I did well, what you think I could do better. And also, if you have any questions or want me to do a specific lesson plan, go ahead and let me know, and I'll be sure to uh, try my best to put it up here if I know it. And if I don't, I'll research it and then uh, make a lesson plan for it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.